everyone welcome to another research assistance with aos academy today being our first maiden edition about literature review of a project sir please can you explain what literature review is in project writing all right thank you very much um firstly literature review from the words literature and from the words review i'll first say that literature stands for a past work or list of past works that has been done by people before. Now the word review means a kind of editing or a kind of reproaching of that work. Maybe for instance you are working on um, a project topic that requires you to go and look at past works and mostly all project topics always need you to check past works. So um, when you are reviewing works that means you are going back to check what other people have actually written about that work to see perhaps the kind of contribution they made while they were actually analyzing or researching their own aspect of the work and also to now see where you can now come in by giving your own contribution towards that um, particular um, instance. Now I'll give you a particular example. Um, for my own project while I was in the undergraduate level, I worked on an aspect of um, morphology though it was morphology that was dealing with language documentation and um, preservation, preservation of our um, languages. And the topic was actually termed the application of flex program in analyzing a weed dialect of Yoruba language. Now I noticed something when I went to go and um, review my literature. I noticed that a lot of people, or few people rather, have actually worked on that aspect. And even the word flex program was not what they were using before. They were using the word term hample program. Now that's the difference between what you are doing currently and what people have done. People could have done some things and you would find out that they are doing it using a different approach or they were doing it using a different terminology. So it is during that literature review you are now meant to now analyze and read in details what exactly people have done and how exactly you can now come in to now make things different. Good. Okay, another question. What is the purpose of a literature review? Well, that's a very good question. Now, um, the, main, the major purpose or the major aim or objective you are seeking to actually achieve when you are doing the literature review is that you want to see that point of divergence. Now, when I'm talking about the point of divergence, I mean that where did people or where did past workers, past authors or past researchers didn't cover the kind of blank space, what they, fed, what they left, the kind of um, the, the, the blank space in knowledge, how or where you exactly want to fill in. I told you initially when we we're talking about what literature review is, is you checking past works, other um, works people have done before. So the major purpose of a literature review is that you want to actually get to learn a lot from other past works and see that area that have not been worked on, do you understand? And now further your own studies focusing on that area. That's nice. All said and done, as a researcher, how do you conduct a step-by-step -step guide for literature review? Well, um, there are a lot of ways you can actually go about your literature review. But um, the most common way that people can actually use to get their literature review is first of all making use of what we call the keywords. Every data or every project topic would always have a keyword. Now, um, take for instance the project topic I gave you now. I said um, the application of flex programming in analyzing a way dialect. If I am to, just as I did during my undergraduate days, if I am to work on that project topic, I would now start bringing out from that topic itself the major things that I'm going to talk on. I said it's an aspect of morphology because we're, we're dealing with analyzing the way words. Now apart from aspect of morphology, I'll talk about the concept word, the concept morpheme. I'll talk about that term, flex program. I'll talk about language program because flex program is a type of language program. So I'll talk about language program itself before I now narrow it down to flex programming. I'll talk about the aspect of linguistics that talks about the concept of language programming, which is called language documentation 
or what we call computational linguistics. That aspect of linguistics, I will talk about it. I can even talk about the branches of computational linguistics while narrowing it down, trying to bring it back to flex programming. And I will talk about the concept of OE dialect. Do you understand that dialect of Yoruba language in relation to other dialects and how it is actually different? Because you know, I told you the point of the divergence. Some people could have worked on maybe the application of flex programming in Bunu dialect of Yoruba, in the Jumu dialect. But the place of divergence is where may I now see that, oh, they have not worked on a way before, I want to work on it. Or perhaps they have worked on a way before, but they didn't work on the words. Maybe some people worked on the sentences. Now me, I now want to work on the sentences. I want to work on the structures of the sentences. Some may have worked on the meanings of sentences or meanings of words. Me, I will now look for another aspect to actually work on. So um, when you are doing a step-by-step -step literature review, basically you have to start from the general concepts down to the simplified or the specific concepts. Now, when I'm talking about the general concept, for my own kind of um, topic I talked about, the very first thing I'll first talk about, just like in every ch um, project chapter, now that reminds me, literature review is always the chapter two mostly of a project work. Now, starting my chapter with the um, literature review, the very first thing is going to be 2.0, which is introduction. Now after 2.0, 2.1, I'm going to talk about that aspect of linguistics that studies language documentation, which is what computational linguistics. I may first of all start with social linguistics or applied linguistics before I narrow it down to social linguistics, or I can just move on to social linguistics and after that go on to language documentation or computational linguistics. After that, I will talk about language programs, the different language programs we have in language. Now, I will now refer to my own flex programming. I can give the history, perhaps, behind the concept of flex programming, what it was called before, as I said initially, that it was called ample program. I can give the um, historical background behind how it was initially called ample program down to when it's now called flex program. I can now talk about the different applications of flex program in analyzing language. Talk about the words, talk about the meanings, talk about the sentences, things like that. I will now streamline it to my own dialect that I'm actually working on. I'll talk about the other brand, like, you know, a way is always, every language in the world is always having a family, what we call a language family. So I will start analyzing the language family of that OE. I can start with the Okun dialect. Now, after talking about the Okun dialect, I will now streamline into OE and show the difference between OE and other Okun dialects of Yoruba that we have before I now actually bring everything together in the tail end of it to draft what I call the theoretical framework. The theoretical framework is always the list of um, guidelines, principles, and um, um, techniques you want to use in now analyzing the data that you collect from the field. Because as you would um, agree with me, OE is a dialect, so, and if I'm studying the words, I need to go to the, the um, what they call it, the speech community and collect a list of words, which we call the word list. If I'm working on sentences, I need to collect frame technique, which is going to be a list of types of sentences they are using in that language. But what would allow me to be able to analyze those words and those sentences? The thing that will basically allow me to do that is the theory I actually adapt or adopt while analyzing that work. And it is in the chapter two, I'm um, to actually give the theoretical framework that I want to actually work on later on in the work. If, for instance, I want to use the descriptive approach, you understand, descriptive analysis, it is from the, two point two, um, the chapter two, which is the literature review, I would talk about it. In brief, do you understand? Explain the kind of tenets, the tenets of the theory, the descriptive analysis theory or the descriptive analysis approach I'm going to use further on in the chapter, maybe chapter three and chapter four, which is data presentation, data analysis that I would use to now analyze all the data that I get from the um, speech community. All right, thank you, sir. Another thing is I discovered basically among students that they can have a full knowledge of a step-by-step -step guide on how to write a literature review. But where exactly can they get this content? Well, uh, there are a lot of sources. There are a lot of places they can actually get sources, um, the content from. 
Um, basically, a lot of students will want to always go to the internet, but the internet is not only the place that you can get it. Perhaps people always focus even on Google, even on the internet, they don't go to all sources, they just go on Google. But we have other different sources. Firstly, the libraries are very useful sources. A lot of people don't like going through the libraries because there are a lot of content that may not even seem useful for them initially, but if they have patience and take it step by step, they will see some of these things that are actually useful for them. So the libraries, and we have different kind of libraries, the departmental libraries part of it, the faculty library, the school library in their university, for instance, is one um, resource place where they could go to. Archives, they could also go to archives. These are quite different from libraries. Archives may be okay. Um, the Bureau of Statistics I talked about in the first video, for instance, they can go to the archives of the National Bureau of Statistics if they are working on something related to statistics or mathematics and go and get data from um, those um, offices. Also, they, they could also get materials from um, journals, from first grades, from articles that were written by um, lecturers, that were written by students. There are a lot of articles that are not really um, difficult to find. It's something that a lot of, okay, I, I remember in the University of Illinois, while I was um, schooling, they always bring out, they always publish almost every year a kind of um, journal, journal of, I think, languages and humanities. Now, those journals, a lot of people buy them, but they don't make use of them. And these are journals that I, for instance, have used to do projects, assist people with their own projects using it. And they would, at the end of the day, pay me for assisting them without them even knowing that it is some of the things that, well, some of the things I'm using and some of the things that they have actually bought and they could actually have consulted themselves. So another thing is, even on the internet, there are different websites, and I will give about three to four of them now, which you can actually always go through and get some of these materials, which sometimes you may be so lucky that you even don't pay any money to get some of those materials. For instance, you could go to pdfdrive.net. It's a very useful um, source to get um, research materials on literature review. You could go to... Um, the academia, academia.org, which is one, one academia.edu rather, which is one very wonderful resource. They have journals, they have articles, and the beauty of academia.edu is that even when you write a kind of um, keyword, for instance, that you have searched before, and you subscribe to their um, journal um, newsletter, they would always send you pre um, new works that comes on, on that platform as time goes on, so that you would actually get a kind of repertoire of um, research um, materials that you would always use subsequently for any other works you are doing. Now, also, you could also go to other university libraries or e-libraries that are still on the internet. Take, for instance, University of Illinois, for instance, has um, their own um, the e, their own e-library. You could consult either on campus or outside campus once you have the details, once you have the login password. You could also make use of that. Even um, going on to other platforms, other platforms whereby we have other linguists like Quora.com. Quora.com is a kind of questioning website where you could always ask questions and even see series of questions people have asked before and the responses that people have given them um, initially to some of those inquiries that they have actually given. And lastly, I would say also you yourself trying to um, look up for materials that are not actually free. You understand it could help you because most of the ones that um, are having a price on it shows that they are much more significant and much more useful than ones that are quite free so you could actually invest in buying some of the things buying some books while i was doing my own undergraduate work to even meet a lecturer i had to buy a book to meet a professor in some universities that i went i had to buy some books so those are the kind of things that a student can actually do to show his seriousness on the literature review process and to also get genuine um, materials that will really help him a great deal or her, him or her during the um, research um, project. Thank you very much, sir. We've actually come to the end of this interview. See you next week. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you very much. You too. You have a wonderful